Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you uh, for joining me again. I find that wonderful writing about things of heaven, things of the future, things of the love of God it takes a while to uh, inspire you. Don't forget that, that the Word of God is living and powerful. And that means it's not just a dry book, but it does speak to you as you might expect God would want to speak to you but it takes time you how often as an individual will we ask of ourselves how is our faith we would seriously ask of ourselves where am I with my faith well I'm pleased to report to you that uh, I've been looking into this question of faith for uh, two or three months now I came across such startling recognition from study that I was convinced that the teaching so issued in by the revelation was an unholy and strong message to us all. And how I was convinced that this, this was that part of the spectrum of the study of faith that, uh, that God, that Jesus was leading me along under this. So I began the reading from Derek Prince's biography book. Dave Prince's biography is available in a book form. Sources from the Dave Prince ministry www.dpmuk.org. He, he describes in, in his biography how his first awakening from his atheism when towards the end of his term at King's College Cambridge where he was a leading academic. He accepted an invitation from a friend to come to a meeting to hear a Christian preacher. He was not particularly taken with the meeting until he heard these words spoken by the speaker from the book of Isaiah, which was written or given 1,200 years before the birth of Jesus. And these words were coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. We'll start at the beginning of chapter 6. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord, I saw God, sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So here we have Isaiah actually physically somehow in the presence of this holy, awesome, powerful God singing and praising, seized on a throne, high and lifted up. And such was the extent of the train of his robe did it fill the temple. Such a magnificent and awesome sight. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. And Isaiah, in the, in the face of this awesome sound, he cries out. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Well, it was those words, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And that startled and woke up Derek Prince. He realised that nobody had described him so accurately. Those words shook him to the core. It was as though, and they probably was, the words of God speaking directly to him, into him, into his heart. God knew his heart. God knew us. God knew who he was. He was a man of unclean lips. Derek Prince then accepted that that was the truest description of himself as he had ever heard before. There's a second part of reading about Derek Prince, if you, if you can read his life story and his biography, uh, where he has an encounter with Jesus Christ in his barrack room in North Africa. He wasn't part of a church, no Christian friends praying for him. 
It couldn't be in a more isolated or hostile environment in the desert, very hot. He's, he's trying to describe to us how, how he was before and after meeting Jesus, his personal encounter with the risen Jesus. And he writes, I was a different person. The night before, I hadn't known how to pray, what to say, or to whom to pray. Now I discovered that I was praying all the time. I, I made no effort. Instead, each breath was a prayer. I remember going to a tap to draw water to, to drink, but I could not drink until I had thanked God for it. And here's the remarkable Also, he says, I had been a habitual blasphemer. Now the words didn't come out. So that description, so that Christian preacher read out from us, I really was a telling and true revelation to him.